Okay, hi everyone. Um, today what we're going to do is we are going to give you an example of what happens during the zombie apocalypse and you find yourself uh, driving in a truck with our intrepid hero, Michonne, uh, the, uh, the warrior with that sword from The Walking Dead. And, uh, and you found a truck and you're trying to escape the mass, the horde of zombies. Okay, so we got the truck here and we have all this whole mass right here of, of zombies. And what we got to do is like you see in the t in TV because it's so realistic. What you want to do is you want to have Michonne drive into and through the zombies because it's a big truck and, and we'll be able to get through all these zombies. It's going to be awesome. Okay, it'll make for really good drama. Now, the issue is that Michonne starting from a dead stop. Haha, <laughs> dead, right? Um, and, uh, and what we need to do is accelerate forward and then hopefully... Uh, during that acceleration, there will be enough energy gathered uh, or momentum, or so kinetic energy, basically, um, in in the uh, in the truck that you'll be able to plow through all these these zombies. Okay, so here we go. We want to accelerate the truck so mm, up to steady speed. So up to this point right here, where we're at maximum speed. And then what happens is that we run into the zombies and the first one slows us down a little bit. The second one slows us down even more. The third one, well, it appears that we didn't have enough kinetic energy built up into the truck and the whole thing grinds to a halt. It stops. Now, if we were to graph this, okay, so I'm going to choose a color here. Right here. Okay, so let's go with a nice blue. We're going to start off a graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a graph like this. Okay. Our y-axis is x for distance. So let's say that's in meters. And our, uh, sorry, our y-axis is in x in meters and our uh, x-axis is time in seconds. And so what we're going to do because it's so dramatic, we're going to have a red line. The red line is going to describe our acceleration and our progress in distance as we slam into the zombies. So here, we're gonna put the zombie over here just to remind us what ended up happening. So we're gonna accelerate, we ramp up, and then we ramp down as we ramp down all the way to um, zero speed as we run into the zombies. Okay, now that's more or less what uh, the graph looks like. And, uh, and that graph, is described as looking like something called a sigmoid, okay? Now, if we plot the velocity of that, I'm gonna move the zombie out of the way a little bit. If we plot the velocity in green, we're gonna do another y-axis, and that y-axis is gonna be like this. Actually, I'm gonna move that zombie even more over. Or here, we'll move the zombie over here. Um, and this is going to be x, um, like this. Okay, sometimes we put a little, um, single quote mark basically right beside the x to denote uh, derivative or sometimes what we'll do is we'll say um, we'll do dx dt okay um, and sometimes we'll just call it velocity for v okay or v for velocity but basically what the dx dt means you've done a derivative and that's going to be in meters per second now what does the graph look like for that well we start off with a velocity of zero because the, uh, the truck was at a dead stop. So we start at zero here and we accelerate. So we're getting the speed up. Then we hit maximum speed about halfway. Then we start hitting those zombies. And so as we're hitting those zombies, things slow down and it peters out like this. Oh, let's draw that back in there like that. Okay. So there we have, we have a ramp up and we have a ramp, ramp down. Okay, and that is the form that uh, that we want to show for the acceleration and deceleration um, of the uh, of the movement, both in terms of distance and in terms of velocity. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to load up something called Maple, and we are going to put in an equation for the sigmoid, and we're going to find its derivative using maple okay once we have that we're going to take that equation and the equation for the derivative and we're going to plug that into matlab okay so a couple of steps here so we start with the concept then we look at the math uh, analytically and then what we do is we move into the numerical methods for plotting etc in matlab
Okay, so hi everyone. Today we're going to uh, be doing the differentiation or the derivative of a function. And the way we're going to do it is using a program called Maple. And Maple is found in WebFast under All Apps. If you go here, you'll find it right here as Maple 18. I've already loaded it, so I'm going to click on it like this. Maple 18 is a fabulous program. It's free for use for you uh, using the WebFast system. And uh, it's great for doing analytical math. And one of the beautiful things about it is that when you do the math on it, it looks like the math that you do in calculus class. The equations look uh, very similar. So here I'm going to change the keyboard to US English. And then I am going to increase the view size to 200%. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a function called my function. Oops, my function like this. I'll spell it right. My function and we define it using colon equal sign. And we're going to do it as a fractional form. So we're going to do one over. So the over is is a division. So you type in the division symbol to the slash symbol on your keyboard and I do 1 plus I want e to the negative x. So over here in the expression window I click on e to the a like this and you see that it appears right here. I replace the e or sorry the a with minus x like that and I hit enter. All right. So now uh, Maple has uh, recognized that this is an equation. And uh, what I want to do now is come up with the derivative of this function. Now the derivative for this sort of function is actually really complicated to do on your own by hand. But you can use the power of Maple to come up with uh, a really quick um, analytical form of the derivative or the differentiation of that function. So I type in DIFF parenthesis and I type in the name of the function, my function, like this. Okay. Oops. Now I got to spell it right with an N right there. Okay. So I type uh, diff my function. So differentiate my function. I hit enter. Oh, I made a mistake. I need to say uh, what the uh, derivative of my function is with respect to. You have to have a variable that it's with respect to. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to say diff my function, like that, comma, x. Okay, so I want to do the differentiation of the function, my function, which is 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x, with respect to the variable x. So now I'm going to hit enter, and there we go. That's what it should look like. So now I have these two functions. Okay, I have the original function, and then I have a differ, uh, the differentiation of that function, or the derivative of the original function. So what I've got right here is a function, uh, the original one, 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x. And if I highlight it, Maple knows that I want to do something with it. It's guessing that I want to do something, but it knows that something interesting should happen. And what it does is it provides me automatically um, with the option of plotting it. All I have to do is highlight the function in question. I click on it and it gives me a 2D plot. Look at that. Okay. Now over here, I want to do the same thing. So I'm going to highlight that and it gives me a preview of the plot. I click it like that. Now I'm going to change the view. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so we can see both plots at the same time. Okay, I'll make it a little bit smaller than that. Let's make it 50%. There we go. Okay, so I've got these two functions, and one of the neat things with uh, Maple that you can do is you can um, you can drag the uh, the plot from one plot window to the other. So I'm going to take this the differentiation function, the derivative function. I'm going to drag it over like this over onto the first plot, and there you have it. Okay, so now that we um, were able to plot the sigmoid function, which was the um, the, the plot of distance um, versus time of that truck before it hit the zombies. 
or as it was hitting the zombies um, in Maple, and then its derivative, which was the velocity uh, of the truck as it accelerated toward the zombies and hit them and then slowed down. Uh, now what we're going to do is uh, plot that in MATLAB, okay? So if you remember from a few seconds ago, uh, we had the original sigmoid plot, which is like a, a stylized S, that's the blue um, stars right here. And then the velocity of the sigmoid, which is the derivative of the equation of the sigmoid, and that's in red, and you can see that right here, okay? And, uh, and so you can see that they both start at zero, and then the velocity maxes out here, and then peters out uh, as the truck runs into more and more zombies, okay? Now, what we're going to do is show you how this is done. In MATLAB, you can do something called setting up breakpoints, and this is actually pretty common in a lot of programming languages. And the breakpoints, I'm clicking them in on top of the lines here. I'm using my mouse to click, click, click on these little dashes. And what they do is establish stop signs in the code so that instead of executing the code completely, what you end up doing is executing one line at a time wherever these breakpoints are found. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to execute the first section of code and what you'll end up seeing is a plot that results of that. And this, this will be the sigmoid graph. Okay, it'll actually look something like this. Okay. And then what we'll do is we will plot a second plot with both the sigmoid and its derivative. So the sigmoid will be in blue stars and the derivative will be in red plus signs. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to run here. So run temp2. Temp2 is the name of my file. I hit this, I click on it, and uh, you'll see a green arrow appear before or beside the uh, stop sign at line number four. Okay, and that will be the arrow that will tell me that this will be the line of code to be executed. Okay, so there we go. There's the green arrow right here. I hit continue, which is over here. You'll see that the run button has disappeared to replace, to be, be it has been replaced by the continue button. So every time I hit continue, it goes to a new line and it's going to execute that line next. So we go to line six and at line six, I'm about to create a figure. There we go. And there is the figure that has been created. Next, I'm going to hit continue one more time and that figure will have a title on it, except that it's disappeared. So I need to switch over and there is the figure again and you'll see that the title has appeared right here. On to the next section of the code. We're about to execute line nine. There's the arrow. I go continue, continue. And now uh, I'm going to define what the derivative is. So I go continue. And now I'm ready to plot the figure. And uh, what's, what's good here is that when I've hit this uh, breakpoint, and I show that I'm about to plot something and I have variables in my uh, line, if I hover over with the cursor, it will give me a preview of the data in each of those uh, variables. So X and S and then X and DS. Um, and sometimes that helps with trying to figure out what's not happening correctly in your code. I'm gonna hit continue again and you'll see a figure appear. There we go, and there's the figure. And now we're going to execute the last line and the last line says legend and it allows you to show sigmoid and um, sigmoid derivative and, and things like that. I'll hit this, continue, and you'll see a legend that appears in the graph like this. Actually, what's important to see here is that the last two things that should have appeared in the legend didn't. And that's because there were only two lines. So that should have been taken out actually originally. So what we have here are the sigmoid and the derivative of the sigmoid. We have the, the sigmoid in blue and the derivative in red like that. Okay. So what we're going to see here is uh, a series of animations that illustrate the um, movement a little bit more clearly because it will be animated. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set out a grid pattern and I'm going to animate it just so that you can see each of the individual grid elements being applied in the order that the, the for loops, the nested for loops that we're going to be using, uh, are doing them in. 
And when we talk about nested for loops, what we're talking about is an inner for loop that has the plot feature here in a pause and an outer for loop. And this allows us to alternate between rows and columns in the grid pattern. We're going to do that first. The second thing we're going to do that we can see right here is we are going to do a single for loop like this. You can see the beginning and end of that for loop in here. And inside of that for loop, we're going to have an if else statement. And what that if else statement does is it takes a look at the data point for the derivative of the sigmoid and it compares um, two of these data points, one after the other, to see if the trend is positive or negative. That is, is the acceleration of the velocity. Okay, so the acceleration, um, which is the derivative of the velocity, is that acceleration positive or negative? So is the truck from that zombie example accelerating, going faster, or is it decelerating, going slower? And uh, this will allow us to see both the derivative and the distance plots being plotted differently if the acceleration is positive or the acceleration is negative. Okay, so without any further ado, I'm going to highlight the first section and by right clicking on it, I can say evaluate section or selection. And that evaluation will allow me to um, run a certain piece of code without calling the whole function uh, at a time. So we're going to go like this and you'll see a graph pop up. Here we go. And you can see that the different columns are being animated for the grid layout. The next thing I'm going to do is highlight this section and it's going to create both the graph for the sigmoid and its derivative. And there's going to be an animation for that and the animation will have different colors when the acceleration is positive versus the acceleration being negative. So I'm going to right click on it again like this, evaluate selection. And here is the graph showing the animation of the sigmoid and its derivative. And look at that, the color just changed which means it was slowing down. So with that, you've now seen how to use for loops in both um, a for loop with an if else statement in it or a nested for loop where you have one for loop inside of the other.